Have you ever wanted to kiss the Blarney Stone? Don't know what I'm talking about? Hang around and I'll explain further. We're off on a trip of a lifetime to Albania and Uzbekistan and lots of places that aren't in between. We're relocating from the land of the long grey summer to Ireland, the land of the funny accents, in particular Cork. It's also our first time on Ryanair. Bring it on. Cork is the third largest city on the Irish island after Dublin and Belfast and is located near the southern coast. Uncle Google says it has a metro population of just over 300,000 people. The Vikings and the English have all trampled through here and I'll talk more about the English a little bit later. We really enjoyed wandering around the city. It feels a bit brighter than English cities with multicoloured houses sparkling in the on again, off again sunshine. But we were just happy to have some on, to be honest. Television celebrity chef Rick Stein described the English market as the best covered market in the UK and Ireland. There's been a market here since 1788 and it's a pretty cool place to wander through. One of the things to do in Cork, according to TripAdvisor, was to visit the Nano Nagel house. So we turned up not really knowing anything about it, but got totally inspired by the wonderful lady on the reception counter called Agnes. We are the only museum in the entire country of Ireland dedicated to a woman. We are so proud of her. Her story is amazing. She founded the presentation Order of Nuns in Cork in the 1700s. And I was taught by the Presentation Sisters, and I've just now discovered that so has Helen. Yeah. Our lovely visitor. Yeah. <laughs> we are both Presentation Girls, so I want you to enjoy every moment here. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Thank Turns out, Nano Nagel was a Catholic nun during a time when the English were being particularly nasty to the Catholics. She was secretly providing the poor Catholic kids with an education when it was illegal to do so. She started with a bakery in the front and a school hidden in the back. It grew until she was providing an education to hundreds of kids, despite it being illegal and very, very dangerous. Go Nano, I say. The order she started has now spread all over the world. Not something I expected to see in Ireland. I didn't know much about Cork before coming here, but I had heard about the Blarney Stone, and that for some strange reason people like to kiss it for good luck. Now I'm not superstitious and in need of a change in luck, but I'll give it a go because well, I don't know why, I just thought I would. So, Blarney Castle on a finish afternoon, and the queue took around about an hour, but we eventually got to the top. It's actually quite high up as the Americans behind us continually reminded us each and every step of the way. It's really difficult to contort your body into a position where you can kiss it. These days there is a safety grill so you can't plummet to your death below. But there was a split second where I thought I could potentially lose my balance and fall over backwards and down. But it's just a bunch of balani to me. This is the indoor toilet. So 
so they've closed their dungeons because of a highly endangered lesser horseshoe bat. How inconsiderate of the bat. One thing I did not realise about the Balani Castle was the fantastic grounds around the castle. There was a poisonous plants garden, a fern garden, a strange rock garden. and an old ice house built in the 1600s. Apparently they used to harvest ice from lakes and ponds in winter and then store the ice below ground through into the summer and it would still largely remain frozen enabling them to have ice in summertime. Quite ingenious really. Ballycotton is a seaside town about a half hour drive out of Cork along the coast. It is a seaside fishing village, a particularly lovely place to visit on holiday. Uh, the local petrol station. We came here because Helen has ancestral roots in these parts, including a very famous man called Tommy Sliney, who used to sell fish from a cart. Apparently he was a real character and we had the good fortune of meeting up with a local historian and an older lady from the village who remembered Tommy and his many other brothers and sisters including Helen's granddad that was also a legend. Helen's granddad served in the submarines in World War II and was one of the few survivors when it was torpedoed and sunk. There was also the very famous story of a lifeboat rescue in the 1930s. Again, one of Helen's granddad's brothers was on the boat and eventually got a citation from the Duke of Kent himself. Who would have thought that Helen would have such heroic blood running through her veins? We also found a wood very reminiscent of a walk in the New Zealand bush where we stretched our legs. Hey, thanks for joining us on this adventure. There are a few more coming, so please like and subscribe. And uh, she's been doing her shopping in town, so she's totally laden down with two bags. And she's walking up the hill. And of course, she's carrying a heavy weight and she feels the need to break wind. <laughs> so she breaks some wind anyway, and she says, oh, go ahead. Gwe is wind right. in Irish. In Irish, okay. And she walks up along and uh, uh, up along and about another 10 or 20 yards on, she feels another need to break wind. So she <laughs> says, breaks wind and she says, Gwe is it? More wind, more okay. Wind. And uh, she walks up another bit and she's almost up at, the, at Tommy's house now at this stage. And she feels another uh, need to break Orange. wind. And she says, Go Arish. And she looks back and she sees Tommy. Oh, there you are, Tommy. Are you? And she realizes Tommy's been following her up. No. And she says, How long are you there, Tommy? I'm here since Goy. <laughs>